Yo, 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 guys, welcome back in today. Today, we're going to be talking about Black Mozart or Joseph Balog. Joseph Balog, Chevalier de Saint George, was born in the French colony of Guadeloupe in 1975. He was born to a plantation owner who was a politician and nobleman. His father, George, would own his young African mother as a slave. Her name was Nanun. George was married at this time, but he still slept with Nanun. During this time period, most mixed children would be condoned. It is said that even though this was the case for most relationships, George still cared for Nanun and Joseph. Joseph would still be considered a slave throughout the French Empire under the 1685 decree. Though he was mulatto, he was still limited in society. Joseph would spend his first seven years of his life on his father's plantation. It seems his father wanted him to have a better life, so he sent him and his mother to France for schooling. George shortly after would come to France and acquire the best tutors for Joseph. He also enrolled Joseph into the Royal Academy. His father was considered wealthy, especially in Guadeloupe, but in France, he was still a common man. This would soon change, and in 1757, he would be made the personal assistant to King Louis XV. This would help Joseph get into the Royal Academy of Fencing and Horsemanship. In the academy, he would quickly rise up to be the best swordsman in the school. His speed, accuracy, precision, and tactics could not be matched. At the age of 17, he would be considered by some as the best swordsman in Europe. Joseph would only lose one match in his career, yet many Frenchmen did not think a mulatto, who also was not French, could ever be the best. A fencing master by the name of Alexander Picard would ask to fight the school's mulatto which was a very offensive term in France at this time. Joseph would go on to defeat Picard in front of a crowd. This fencing match was over very quickly with the skilled Joseph. Joseph would soon after become a champion fencer, graduate from the academy, and earn the title of Chivalia, which means knight in English. This title still did not give him his father's social status by law though his success did get him into the French Royal Guard. The woman would fall in love with his handsome looks and his networking within France would lead him to his ultimate love. Joseph would become very popular. Two famous composers would make dedicated pieces to him. This would lead him into another art in which he would excel at. Music would be his path to changing French history forever. Focused so much on his swordsman career, no one took note of how good of a violinist he was. In 1769, Joseph, the best swordsman, would open up with one of the best orchestras in Paris. His secret would wow the crowd, and in two years, he would become concert master. In 1772, he started to get standing ovations for his solo performances. He was so talented that Antonio Lully would compose two concerts for him. This would lead Joseph to become one of the most sought after violinists before the Paris Revolution. He would eventually become conductor and concert master of a company known for organizing some of the most popular concerts in France. He would soar with popularity through France and people started to call him the Black Mozart. With his father's support in his career, he could now do whatever he wanted, or so he thought. In 1774, his father would die in the Caribbean, and his father would leave a portion of his wealth to him and his mother. Unfortunately, due to French law, George's full French daughter would take all his wealth. This would leave Joseph to use what he had learned to pave his life. Over the next few years, he would duel in hundreds of fights, wrote comedy, boxed, performed, and wrote 25 pieces of music. 
Joseph would even go on to create a new genre in classical music called Sinfonia. In 1776, the Paris Opera would be struggling with creativity. They were also struggling with their finances. Joseph would apply to become the next director. When the three leading ladies caught word of Joseph's inquiry, they would petition to the queen that a mulatto could never lead them. Joseph did not want the embarrassment at this time and did not want to embarrass the queen, so he withdrew. King Louis would then take back the opera from the city of Paris. The queen would soon after start to hold her musicals at Versailles. She would only invite a small close-knit group. Within this group, she would invite Joseph to play, and she would play alongside him on the piano. Joseph would go on to direct the prestigious musical theater of Montesson. From 1776 to 1780, Joseph would compose four symphonies, six string quartets, three operas, and three violin concerts. In 1778, Joseph would stay in the same house as Mozart. Joseph would contribute to Mozart writing better works. This would happen when Mozart asked Joseph to play his violin for him. Joseph would inspire Mozart at a level higher than his own. Louis Philippe II was the king's brother. He is said to be a fair man, liberal, abolitionist, and fully believed in democracy. He was known for secretly funding riots and marches to make the lower class unstable. This was due to his views differing from his brother. This is said to be one of the causes of the French Revolution. Joseph was so popular that Louis Philippe II would take him to England with him. This was to win over the Prince of Wales and the future King of England. Louis Philippe looked up to the Prince and wanted his future support of the French Revolution soon to come. Joseph would play for many nobility in Wales and England. He even dueled famous Frenchwoman who was a diplomat and spy for France. Her name was Chevalier Dion. She would be the only one to beat him. It's also important to know she identified as a man in France. Joseph would help persuade the future king and other abolitionists to help. His time in Wells was not without action. On a dark night, on the way to meet with abolitionists, he was attacked by four men with guns. All he had was his walking stick, which he used as a sword. He would arrive to the meeting shortly after with only a few bruises. Over time, he would help change how some people viewed the world, and in 1807, the transatlantic slave trade would be outlawed in the British Empire. He would return to France in 1789, and the country did not seem the same. Joseph could feel a country in which at any moment could revolt. With talks on the street, people's feelings shifting, and Philippe gaining popularity to lead France instead of his brother, Louis Philippe would be sent away by his brother. Within three weeks, the French Revolution would happen. Joseph would continue to support the revolution. He wanted to see full change in the country, especially due to him being mulatto, which always held him back from the top. Though he dined with royalty of the countries, played for them, and dueled the best, he still felt the limits should not be due to one's color. In 1791, he would join the Revolutionary Voluntary Army. He soon rose up to colonel and led the 1st European All-Black Soldier Regiment. Joseph led the All-Black Regiment against the Australian and Netherlands Ally campaigns. He made it a point to always take care of his men and to make sure deadly orders did not come their way. In 1793, Joseph was arrested and thrown in prison for no reason. When he asked why, other French revolutionary soldiers said there were no charges. This puzzled him. 
The soldiers then replied and stated he was arrested due to a new law. This law would be called the Law of Suspects. This was due to him formally performing for and with the Queen and King of France. He would be sentenced to 18 months. During this time, the reign of terror was occurring in France. The former queen would get beheaded, other nobility, and Joseph's friend and king's brother, Louis-Philippe II, would also be beheaded. Joseph knew at this point that he would die, though he helped serve and support the revolution. Right before it was his time to be beheaded, the citizens of France had had enough of killing. The citizens would overthrow the committee by force, and Joseph was released. During his time in prison, slavery in France had been abolished. Once freed, he would move to a small town outside of Paris where he played the violin for local shows. During his life, he was a war hero, the best swordsman in France, a legendary composer, played violin for Mozart, who he inspired, and helped change the perception some had. In 1799, he would die at the age of 53. Please like, subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you can get all my videos down there. Add me on all social medias, which is African Network, which is Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, and Facebook. Till next time, peace, one love.